Good morning, Kids Rock. I hope you guys are doing well. I miss you. I miss seeing your faces. I hope that wherever you're at this morning, you're doing good. You got plenty of supplies, food, friends, and everything and family. I just want you to know that this morning, we've got an important topic we've been talking about all month, and it's humility. And uh, as we get going on today's Bible story, I just want to remind you that humility can be tough, but you can do it. You can learn to put others first. Now check out this week's Bible story. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Philippians. Chapter 2, verses 3 through 8. Jesus' life and death and resurrection changed the way everything works. It changed how we view others and how we treat them. One of Jesus' followers, a man named Paul, wrote about it in a letter to believers in Philippi. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. Jesus was equal with God, but Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He appeared as a man. He was humble and obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death. Let's imagine how this truth might play out today. Angus McCrane had been up since 5.30 a.m. for his job as a school bus driver. After three morning routes, he skipped lunch to clean out throw up and a spilled soda from the back of his bus. Yuck. Then there were three afternoon routes and a whole stack of paperwork waiting for him at the bus garage at the end of the day. So by the time Angus got home, he was starving. He couldn't wait to dig into this delicious ribeye he'd picked up. Mmm. <laughs> Gonna fire up that grill right away. While the grill heated, Angus prepared a baked potato, and sautéed green beans. A little salt, a little lemon. Doo -doo -doo. Then he seared the steak to perfection and slid it on his plate alongside the fluffy baked potato and crisp green beans. Ooh. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this food. Amen. Angus sliced off a corner of the sizzling steak and skewered it with his fork. Ah. <laughs> but before he could take a bite, oh, for goodness sake. <sighs> with a regretful glance at his steak, Angus headed over to his front door and opened it. His new chipper neighbor Marge stood there, holding an enormous Siamese cat. <sighs> Hello, Marge. I am so sorry to barge in, but I just found out about a super last minute work trip and I don't have anyone to watch Boris while I'm gone. Angus just stared at the cat and the cat stared back smugly as if he knew Angus hated cats. Well, I, I gotta tell you, you know, I've never been around cats much. Oh, that's no problem. I've got everything you need right here. Angus looked past Marge to see several bags and boxes, plus an entire carpeted climbing tree. So could you do it? Angus glanced sadly at his quickly cooling steak, but he could see Marge was a little desperate. Well, okay. It took Marge nearly 10 minutes to explain every little detail of Boris the Cat's care. Finally, Angus was alone again with his steak and Boris. Yeah, better keep those fuzzy paws away from my dinner, you hear me? But before Angus could take a bite! Ah, what on earth? Angus jumped up and hurried over to the side window. He could see exactly what had happened. Ah, that boy. Zachary Kircher was the kid who lived next door. He loved sports, but didn't have good aim. He'd already dented Angus's car with a baseball and destroyed a patch of petunias playing soccer. And this time, it was a rogue football that had hit the window. Huh. At least it didn't break the glass. Angus saw Zachary scrambling to recover the football and make his escape, but as he tried to hop the fence, he stumbled. <laughs> Serves him right. When Zachary got up, 
Angus could clearly see that he'd badly gashed his knee. Angus sighed, thought mournfully about his steak, and opened the window. Zachary! Oh, sorry, Mr. McCrane, I I'm leaving. No, 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 just hold on a minute. We gotta clean up that knee. So Angus grabbed his handy dandy first aid kit and headed outside. It took another 10 minutes to clean out all the dirt from Zachary's scrape and get it all bandaged up. And finally, Angus sat down to dinner again for the third time. <sighs> his steak was barely warm. Uh, I am so hungry I could eat the entire cow. But before he could take a bite. Oh, that don't sound good. Angus ran to the front window. It appeared that the neighborhood ice cream truck had swerved to avoid Zachary, who had ran into the road to chase his football. Big no-no. And now that truck was listing sideways on a flat tire. You have got to be kidding me. <sighs> Angus opened the front door and headed down the sidewalk. The poor teenage driver was checking out the damage. It's my first day on the job. I wrecked the truck. They'll fire me. No, no, no. It's just a flat, son. You wait right here. With a deep sigh, Angus headed back to his garage, grabbed his handy dandy toolkit, and showed the young driver how to remove the flat tire and replace it with a spare. Thanks, I'd totally give you an ice cream sandwich, but they might fire me for giving stuff away. Angus wiped the grease off his hands as he watched the ice cream truck ramble down the street. Speaking of ice, his dinner must be stone cold by now. Excuse me? Angus jumped a mile to see Marge standing behind him. She was wearing oven mitts and holding a hot apple pie. Steam seeped from the cracks. I can't eat this since I've got to leave. I thought you might like it. Well, glory be. Angus inhaled the heavenly smell. Hmm. <sighs> First I interrupt your dinner, then you help that kid next door, and now changing a flat you sure put others first. Ah, I don't generally feel like doing it, but uh, thank you. Angus happily accepted the apple pie. This time he would be putting dessert first while his dinner reheated in the oven. Now it would have been a lot easier for Angus to just eat dinner and ignore the people around him who needed help. But little by little, God was helping him serve others, just like Jesus did. Wow, wasn't that an incredible story? We learned about after Jesus' resurrection, there was this church, and this church got this letter, and the letter actually talked about humility. Now, the bottom line of that is this. Put others first because Jesus put you first. That's right. Now, I'm going to help you remember that in a variety of ways. Now, check this out. I need you to stand up. That's right. Stand up in your living rooms, in your robe. I need you to stand up. We're going to learn this together this morning, all right? Now, here we go. For the first word, put, we're going to be at the golf course, and we're putting. You ready? So we're going to put... We're going to put just like this. We're going to reach behind us because we're in line to get others. We're going to put others first because Jesus put you first. We'll do that one more time. Ready? We're going to put others first because Jesus put you first. Now, the Bible says it just like this. In that same letter to the church, we get to read that this morning. Look at this. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you're proud. Instead, be humble value others more than yourselves. Now, as we're in this quarantine, I want you to know that you can be practicing humility at home. That's right. You can do it in a variety of ways. You can let someone else have the last part of the toilet paper. You can let someone else have the last drink of your favorite drink in the fridge, or you can let someone else have that last hour of playtime in the day. You can do that. You can set the example for humility in your home because we're here joining you. We're praying for you. And I'm so happy I got to be with you this morning. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya.